Dry cleaners keep their customers looking good for those all-important business meetings, a much-anticipated social event, or important family occasions. Perk, short for perchloroethylene, is used extensively in the dry cleaning business. It's an effective solvent for removing those nasty stains and dirt from a garment. It's also non-flammable for fire-safe operation. Finally, it meets the recommended cleaning process shown on many garment labels. Satisfying customers is a dry cleaner's most important goal. If perk is not managed properly, however, the health of not only dry cleaning staff, but nearby residents or tenants can suffer serious harm. This can range from respiratory illnesses to cancer caused by toxic atmospheric releases. PERC needs to be carefully managed to prevent contamination of groundwater in the event of a leak. Increasingly, public jurisdictions from the local municipality to provincial and federal agencies are exercising varying degrees of oversight on dry cleaning practice. Failure to comply with best practices and in some cases local regulations can result in fines and even business failure. It's a simple observation, but causing health and environmental harm isn't good for the dry cleaning industry in general. It can result in even more stringent restrictions on its ability to do business or obtain acceptable retail sites. Best practices for using PERC in one's dry cleaning process start with daily due diligence. As a first rule, Dry cleaners should oversee on a daily basis all aspects of their operation and be alert to any and all potential impacts. This starts with the proper use of equipment in which PERC is effectively contained to ensure minimal or no toxic release. These stages include receiving and storing the PERC solvent, the entry of PERC into the equipment, the application of PERC to garments in the equipment, completing the drying of garments in the equipment, and collecting any residue from this entire application for safe and effective disposal. Let's walk through the process, beginning with dry cleaning machines. They should be managed in a manner consistent with the manufacturer's recommended maintenance and operating schedule. PERC should be introduced through a closed loop, i.e. direct coupled, system. Machines should have an integral PERC water separator. They should use the same drum for the washing, extraction, drying, and aeration cycles. Operators should minimize the time that button traps and doors are open. And machines should be equipped with an integral refrigerated condenser that recovers perk vapor in the recirculated air from the drum of the machine so that it is not vented to the atmosphere. Next, ensure a PERC impermeable secondary containment system is in place, holding a volume equal to 110% of the capacity of the largest container, 
tank, or a machine within which perk, wastewater, or residue are stored. This containment system should cover, at minimum, the entire surface below each dry cleaning machine, tank, or other container. From the moment perk is received, it should be stored in closed and lidded containers. This applies also to the eventual wastewater and residue, including lint. All of these should be located in a secure indoor location at all stages of their use or creation until they are removed or treated. Dry cleaners should install perk resistant, i.e. impermeable, drain plugs on all floor drains in the event of a spill of any perk containing solvent, wastewater, or residue. As well, spill kits are required on site in the event of a sealing system failure. If an accident occurs, the dry cleaner should know about spill reporting requirements and cleanup obligations in the event of a discharge, leak, or spill. Wastewater and residue should be disposed of following waste generation legal requirements and scheduled time periods for transporting off-site unless wastewater treatment is undertaken on-site using approved equipment. Here are some other regulations for environmental and human health best practices. Ensure that spotting agents do not contain perk. Perform leak detection checks, both visually and using a leak detection device, weekly or as sensed, and repair or replace as necessary. Clean component parts regularly, including condensing coils, fan blades, and lint screens. Drain all cartridge filters in a closed container for at least one full day before handling as hazardous waste. Meet occupational health and safety requirements for PERC through proper labeling, mandated record keeping, and regulatory reporting, and maintain such records and reports on site. Train all employees about the above requirements to ensure on site knowledge about the use of PERC, its management, and its proper disposal in all aspects of the dry cleaning process. As jurisdictionally mandated, comply with regulatory requirements for training and accreditation. In summary, best environmental practices are just good business. PERC has many benefits. Customers receive effective and predictable results. Doing so, however, requires dry cleaners to be well trained and prepared to handle PERC by meeting all health, safety, and environmental standards. Dry cleaners protecting people and the environment ensure that everyone wins. Clean clothes plus clean environment plus 
happy and healthy customers equal good business.